Welcome to another episode of Entrepreneurs in Fuego. We're documenting the journey of amazing entrepreneurs like Troy Bulky. How you doing, man? Good, how you doing? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> Arc Capital Partners. That's part of what you do, though. I mean, you do a bunch of other stuff. Tell us, tell yeah. us, tell us, tell us what you do. Well, I, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, so I started when I was 21, 22 years old in business with no money. In fact, I started my uh, first business with my $300 tax return when I was 21 years old. And I uh, didn't what? know how I was going to pay my rent the next month. What business was that? That was a magazine called the Valley Home Business Directory, which eventually evolved into the franchise concept of the new homeowner's guide. Wow. But it started literally in a studio apartment, 400 square foot, well, 300 square foot little place, sleeping on a futon. <laughs> The good old days. Yeah. The good old days. And so there well, you there you are. And in fact, this is about your journey. So let's 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 kind of talk about that journey. So you, there you are. You have absolutely no worries in the world, and you have the three hundred dollar tax refund. And then you started your own business. What did you do? You sold that business. You went into something else. Oh, I I bought up my partner, and then turned that into the Valley Service Directory, and. Uh, Bought out that partner and turned it into the new homeowner's guide and got a new partner. And I did that business publishing magazines for eight years. And then um, I kind of just grew out of it. I, and I did sell that business and I got into the energy business from there. And uh, started another company called Emissions Technology, where we cut, cut uh, pollution and fuel costs on big diesel caterpillars and trucks and it's, it's been it's still in business today. It's 16 years old. It's still in business today. Well, what, why that business? Was was there something that, that you saw you know, that that should fall from the tree? What what happened? I, what? I I went from the magazine business, which was making great money. I finally learned how to make money after eight years uh, in that business. Publishing is not easy. I, I was going to say let, let me let me stop you right yeah, there because yeah. it took how long? Eight years. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I made some money, I eked out a living, but by the time I was eight years into it, I was making 20, 30 grand a month, and it was like, and I didn't have to work at it anymore, so I got cocky. And mm. all my clients were all big clients like Greyhound Park, and the, you know, these guys would come to me and like, hey, Troy, can you do a magazine for me? Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do our billboards? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. You know, I didn't know what I knew about billboards or radio or TV. I was, it took me eight years to figure out publishing. Right, 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 <laughs> you know? right, right. But because I was making money and I was 28 years old, and, you know, 27, 9, 28, 29 years old, that I you know, could do anything. Because everybody was giving me this business that I didn't even really know that I deserved. And, um, and when I would do radio and TV ads, if I screwed it up, I was also very integral. I would take my own personal money and pay for the problem that I caused to fix it. Or, I would broker a print job and do like someone's brochure. If there was a mistake, I was the customer was always right. I'd redo it, you know, and uh, pay it out of my pocket. And that could only take you so far. Oh, that happened. I mean, that, about three months and a whole lot of mistakes. I had to like let me just take another look at this thing, you know, <laughs> make sure my microphone's working. So I had a friend of mine who I pulled up my brand new BMW. He said, "Oh, so nice to see you. Great car. You know, how's life treating you?" And I hadn't seen him in a long time. But he was a very motivated guy, just like me. And he pulls up in a Viper. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> so, wait a minute, a yeah, little penis is, yeah, over yeah, here. Wait a minute, I'm not going to be a big I thought, okay. wait a minute, I'm, I'm that you know, guy. <laughs> right. And uh, he was in shape, and he was like, this is, I mean, you're, you must be doing really well. Because, well, wait till you see my house. Oh, like, let's go to your house. Oh, it was like, and so we went to his house. Right was, then, yeah, we went to Carolina. And it was this beautiful house, and you know he was doing really well. And he said, "Yeah, you should come work with me." I'm like, "I don't work for. I'm a publisher. I don't work for anybody." Right. <laughs> and then after about three, four weeks of nagging at me and hanging out and just you know, yeah, it just makes my guys are making you know, 80, 90 grand a year, blah blah blah. And they're part time. I'm like, I'm like. I would do this, you know, anonymously on the weekends to just, you know, help out if that's what you're looking right, for. Right. Train these guys. You want a consulting gig? What do you? What do you? I don't. I don't work for anybody, you know, because I never had a job. Oh no, you're not. It's an independent contractor. I'm like, yeah, I'm still working for you. I'm not not doing that. But I, so I did it for two three days, and uh, just like in the mornings for a couple hours, and 
I got a paycheck. I looked at that paycheck, and it was just all commission, right? I said, I don't have to pay any employees. I don't have to pay a printer, <laughs> no graphic designers, no writers, no photographers. No nope, This is my money. <laughs> this is just me. This is just <laughs> of course, I took the money and paid to my other bills with it, but my business bills. But then the next week, I made $1,700. I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just do this for a while. Because like, it was just so nice to have money that wasn't already spoken for that I had busted my butt for, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? And so I did that, and then within two months of just being able to just relieve and breathe from having that kind of income, I was making you know, two grand a week, this was many years ago, 15, 16, 20 years ago, something like that, but 1998, right? So I, uh, but then my entrepreneur fever got kicked sure, in. Sure. I said, well, why are you selling these one at a time, two at a time? He goes, well, that's just the way it works. Just, just sell one, two at a time. I was selling these gas saving devices, fuel saving devices, little telemarketing thing. It was unbelievable. He paid weekly. And I'm like, well, what if I could sell 100 of them at a time? What about that? He goes, Troy, just, just stick with one and two. I'm like, yeah, but you know, we could be making so much more money. And this is like the, this, this is like the, the holy grail this thing is. It's the right, greatest right. product you've ever seen. Right. You offer a money back guarantee. I mean, all the things that make a successful company successful, you're doing it except for the way you're marketing it is like snake oil. So I started, uh, I said, let's advertise in Canada. So we started advertising in Canada and uh, I sold the country of Canada to this group. And they're, they had to write a big fat check to get started, and I get paid residual income, whatever they bought. From that point on, I got you know minimum of 10, 12 grand a month without even having to do anything else. Amazing. Then all my big clients that I was trying to do the printing for that I was screwing up, and <laughs> yep. I kept only the cream of the crop. You know, I let the magazine go, which is I shouldn't have because it's, now I'm going back to it. It's such a great idea. The new homeowner's guy, great idea, right? I'm Perfect turning idea. into it's an app now. <laughs> New homeowners got app. Why? Because there's the internet. Right, right, right. right, right Magazines right. are out. Right, right. Um, so I, 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 I end up going to Canada to train these guys because I thought, you know, they, I thought they were big shots and they were, before I knew it, they ran, they ran out of money. They couldn't sell. They had all this product they had to buy and just to be distributors. Oh my God. They had a whole warehouse from floor to ceiling stacked with things. I went to go out and see them in Canada and I met their families. They, they treated me like a king. They bought they made me dinner and just took me to the hockey games, all the Canadian stuff. And literally when I sat there and I saw them, I looked at all the inventory and looked how bad they were hurting and they had put their whole lives in my hand. And I literally choked, I got choked up and I a tear is going down my face while we're at dinner and I'm watching the brother-in-laws, cousins, and all these people were like, a table as big as this with the whole family. And I literally got teared up and I thought, I have to help these people. I have to help these people. And here I meanwhile, I lived in Scottsdale, living a life, it was great, you know, living in Kirtland and happy and had a beautiful girlfriend and I had to move to Edmonton, Alberta. <laughs> it was like Just to help them out. 40 degrees below zero, you know. And, but then it was, it, there was an award in, in that because, can you hear me? Is it, is it, it's down to here now, is it okay? okay? You're good. So I went out there and said, I said, I'd stay out for, I'm just coming for a week. No, no, you gotta come out for two weeks. Like, uh, no, I'll come out for a week. And the, I made a deal with the inventors, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell stuff for these guys. When I do, I want you to pay me on your side too because I'm going to Canada. <laughs> to, right, to do right. this, I had to go get a passport and the whole thing. And I was getting paid on both sides, so the financial aspect was good. But then it got better because I got to do what I wanted to do. I got to market the way I wanted to market because it was like my, I was coming there to save the day. You found um, your financial independence, but it looks like you also found yourself in this process. I found it, I've lost it, I found it, I've lost it, but that's, that's okay. Right. Once you find it once, you can find it again. That, that is for damn sure. Yeah. I mean, in, it's in, a neural pathway. Don't ever think that just because you failed, that doesn't mean anything. If you made it before, you, boom or not boom, I did, you, you can make it again. What is your business now? Now, um, I'm actually following my passion. I teamed up with one of my clients uh, who I do marketing for and fundraising for. We are now providing small business owners, startups, 
people that the benefit I didn't have that you didn't have. Yep. My three hundred dollars didn't last me very long at all. You know what I mean? My yep. three hundred dollar tax return. So I had to go out and sell to people I didn't know with a product I didn't have, a magazine that didn't exist, and the right. hardest sale that exists, which is selling advertising. I mean, Absolutely. When I was twenty two years old, twenty one years old. If I had had, you know, fifty, a hundred, fifty, two hundred thousand dollars to work with. We could have done a lot more things. We could have got there faster. We could have budgeted. I could have at least paid my own rent and not freak out about whether or not I could pay my rent because we had to save our money to publish the magazine, right? Sure. Every sale we made, that money went in the bank. We didn't touch it. You know? I'm now providing small business owners, startups who don't have a bank statements, they don't have tax returns, they don't have current cash flow, they don't have all the things that a bank would. Banks will not give a small business startup money, period. Yeah, that's. I, unless with unless you have collateral, you want to give up your house. You want to give up, you know, other things like this. Yep. Even a car, they will only touch it. Chase won't touch you. Be available, nobody will touch you. You either go to your cousins, your aunts, uncles, brothers, family, friends, and you beg for help. Or the idea is so damn good that a couple people close to you are like, hmm, that's great. But what's your experience? Right. You don't have experience. And so what your what your business does is provide help for the for the non-traditional non-bankable businesses that exactly. are looking they have a very good idea startups. But the, the, the startups but they want some capital to get them going they, they need capital to get going they need it they can't market themselves without a little bit of money <clears throat> you can't sell anything unless you market right so what I'm doing is I'm starting by providing them money you get a URL I'm targeting the guys that just got a URL a website yeah. I hit them with guys it's anywhere from 50 to 150 thousand dollars guaranteed if you got a 650 credit score you get a 650 credit score, I can help you right now. Five to seven days, I'll get you your money. Hmm. And then I follow up with, and let's start with grill and marketing. Don't go spend a bunch of money at the big agency and waste all your money and not get any returns. Start with me, I'll get you a national publicity guaranteed 10 days. Everything I do is on a 10 day deliverable. I don't just charge by the hour, it's all 10 days. 10 day publicity, 10 day media, 10 day social media, 10 day video, whatever it is. I get you on the radio, I get you on a podcast, whatever it may be, 10 days. But we start with getting the money because people can't do anything without money. And I'm trying to coordinate, you know, we, we do executive summaries because they should also raise money as well. But they need to get an executive summary, a perform a business plan. These things are needed for any small business, but they don't know this yet. So we're trying to provide education. So I'm trying to be the destination for small businesses. Your first year in business, you hang close right here. You stay right here. You know what, my brother? There's only one other person that I can remember in over 210 or so interviews that we call back uh, to do kind of a part two, mm -hmm. and you're going to be probably that second person because what you have is, is not only do we want to know more about your journey, what happened, you, know, you don't want to know it all, man. We do want to know all of it, brother. We do want to know. I can tell you, but, but, but you know what? You have no idea. But but you know the other thing is that what you have right now. I think it's gold, cool. and not too many people know about it. Heck, I didn't know about it. Heck, I probably I yeah. might just be a client. I can tell tell yeah. me that we'll probably sign up right now, <laughs> and and become the, because you know, that would be a great testimonial too. Because tell me what you could do with that kind of capital. Oh. Because you know you've learned how to do so much with nothing for so long. You know what I mean? <laughs> that, that's that's a, that's an interesting. I mean, you look at now if yeah. you stay that way, and just like take your gorilla marketing and turn it into a little bit of gorilla with steroids without spending too much. Yep. It's, you stay cheap. You stay cheap, but with money, you can do it without stress. You have the commitment to keep your budget here, but you have the money to work with and you can just get a feature story here and there. Get, you know, like, hey, no, I'm gonna do this radio thing just for this promo. This event, I have the guy, I got an entrepreneur convention, I'm gonna be on KFNN, Financial News Radio. Yeah. Okay, 300 bucks a pop times 10 pops, we're gonna spend three grand. And we'll have a whole bunch of people show up. You know what I mean? We'll have them put the booth up. That's the kind of stuff that's worth it. Well, you know? he, and then he, you do the feature story about it afterwards. Milk everything you can about that event that is transforma you know, transformational to you. And, and here, here's the thing, you've already done it. You know the system, there, it's, it's tried and true. So you don't have to yourself test it out because you know it works yeah. and you have a system that it works. This is going to be the end of part one. Uh, we're going to bring you back in a couple of weeks. That's good. You want to come back and, and tell us a little bit more? Yeah. If you can, if you can, you know, if bra you brace the audience. <laughs> <because this is> <laughs> Man, you're, right. you're awesome. We want to hear more of your story, but for now, we're out. <laughs>